welcome to Take It Up with Jessica Lee. I'm here with Anna Killa, who is the VP of Product Marketing at Tricentis. Anon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. You know, you are in charge of product marketing, but when I learned about what you do, it's so broad. It's beyond product marketing. Uh-huh. Tell us, what um, what does Tricentis do and what's your role there? What do you do? Sure. So Tricentis is a leader in software automation, software test automation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we provide uh, test automation software and we help enterprises reinvent software testing for Agile and DevOps. So uh, before I tell more about Tricentis, let me just kind of talk about the space that uh, we cover, Mm -hmm. right? And what's going on in Marketplace so that uh, I could talk about what we offer and how we help enterprises. So what's happening right now is that in the software development lifecycle, There are a lot of solutions that help developers increase their software uh, delivery speed. By that, I mean that they could really deploy, build and deploy software really fast. Earlier, we talked about having releases on a yearly basis, uh, then months. Now we're talking about uh, uh, software releases many times in a day. That's right. Right? Yes. Continuous. So, continuous uh, delivery. Delivery. And so what that uh, uh, does is that it is makes uh, and uh, very, very important for enterprises to ensure that the product that they're delivering has acceptable amount of risk. Mm-hmm. It does not fail, it does not give bad experience to customers. Right. right? That's where we come in uh, to help enterprises test and automate the software testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I take it that you provide a software and Mm -hmm. therefore you will probably use your own tool to do your own software testing and releases? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Definitely we do that. Uh, And again, uh, automation uh, is it's a key in current marketplace mm-hmm. with the speed that we're delivering the software. Mm-hmm. What's happening is that uh, with the speed and the software coming too uh, fast, uh, it is becoming very important for enterprises to know what's the risk involved in the software before deploying into production, right? Mm-hmm. So understanding the risk is key. So for each and every release candidate, enterprises need to look at uh, and understand, first of all, does this release candidate has acceptable amount of risk? Once they understand that, that, okay, this risk is something that we can take, yes. then they can deploy. Uh, otherwise, if they do not know, they're always worried that what will be the cost of downtime? Right. What the consequences, will be uh, uh, the consequences? More predictable at this yes. point. That's very important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're responsible for getting the customer, promoting the brand, mm-hmm. and the product information, the messaging. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. T- tell us a bit more about your role, because it's beyond product marketing. Yeah, what so, I yeah, product marketing typically, you know, there are three to four things that most of the organizations have been doing product marketing for mm-hmm. many years. So, uh, messaging, uh, you know, diff- uh, coming up with a uh, differentiable message, uh, articulating what is it that we are delivering to customers mm-hmm. which is differentiable from other solutions, right? So articulating the messages to the right audience, to the target persona is key, right? Mm-hmm. Then uh, helping the marketing team uh, in the integrated marketing program, right? Uh, we are responsible for building the lead, building the funnel, moving uh, the leads in the funnel from top of the funnel to the mid, uh, middle of the funnel and to the bottom of the funnel. So we help with that, right? And then uh, we are also responsible for uh, thought leadership content, right? So uh, making sure that that uh, we are uh, perceived as, as a leader and, uh, and uh, we are talking about something that's not only about speed and feed that our product is offering, but how in general we are helping uh, enterprises and how the, the different trends are going on and, and uh, where to, to go. Mm-hmm. For example, today, even today, 
eighty percent of testing still done manually. Wow, Think about that's that. That's surprising. Uh, it's surprising. Yes. You know, like uh, when I was uh, mostly in uh, or, uh, early career, I spent most of my time in the ops side and system management. Mm -hmm. When I came closer to testing, I was surprised that even today. In this world of automation and digital transformation and everything, uh, we still have eighty percent or like seventy to eighty percent tests done manually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So educating enterprises, educating everyone that hey, now that you have different tools to do the software development faster, you need to think about automation. It's key for the uh, testing uh, phase. For, for the testing phase, it's very very important. Otherwise, that becomes your main bottleneck. So uh, kind of we, we write a lot of articles, we work with analysts, we do surveys, uh, we, uh, we work with industry organizations mm -hmm. to support right. uh, different uh, research uh, to ensure that, that we are coming up with uh, the quantitative support for uh, things like, you know, like the manual testing is still kind of uh, used widely and we uh, uh, then talk about the value of automation in, in test. So you target a particular type of client, clients who have very large like right. SAP systems, right? right? So tell me a little bit about, about, about why that particular um, market that you right. have. Right. Yeah, so we target uh, large enterprises in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, most of the large enterprises actually, 91% uh, uh, of global 2000 customers today, enterprises today, are using SAP, mm. right? And uh, uh, most of them are actually using uh, manual testing. What they do is that many of them have delegated uh, it to software testing companies in India and other places, companies like Accenture, Wipros, okay. and they have been doing testing. It was fine with the existing SAP software, which kind of usually did yearly releases, mm -hmm. and it was okay because the processes worked fine, they did their uh, t uh, development, they did their customization, and then uh, teams uh, at remote location took you know, uh, three to six weeks to do the testing mm -hmm. and then uh, get back to the team. But in this, in this current world, as SAP, for example, yes. is moving to a new technology called SAP 4 HANA, yes. uh, which is distributed, uh, follows agile methodologies, uh, uh, frequent release cycles, it is really impossible to depend on manual testing. Mm -hmm. So uh, test automation becomes really, really important. Yes. So you you can shorten that whole cycle from engineering to uh, product on the marketplace mm -hmm. because you show the, the sure. test cycle. Yeah, and it is important for you to test it because you need to execute your test in the uh, certain time window. In many many of the uh, cases, they try to do their uh, automated testing overnight after the build is done. Mm -hmm. So you need to have your uh, you know acceptable amount of testing done in in uh, in overnight. Uh, within eight hours, within six hours, depending on your, uh, you know, how you're operating. If you're operating in one country, uh, then uh, you have more time. But if you are a global company, yes. I mean, you are running 24 by 7, That's and right. your your time window to do the testing is smaller and smaller. So mm -hmm. you really need to think about how you could do the the minimal amount of tests to ensure that uh, uh, that your your software is not going to make a, a bad impact or give a poor end user experience. So a lot of the people that are using the old uh, SAP solution will have to migrate to the new solution? Yeah, actually good thing that you're bringing it up. Uh, SAP is uh, mandating that all their customers move to uh, SAP for HANA, which is actually using their own database, mm. uh, which has a, a different technology than uh, traditional relational databases in the marketplace. Mm. And they're mandating that customers uh, uh, migrate to SAP for HANA. Mm. And what that means, that's almost like a Y2K situation that well, we had yes. uh, 20 years, 19 years ago, uh, that that's the, you know, like it's time bound. It's this event happening and everyone needs to move. And that means that uh, those enterprise customers have to uh, do test automation. There's no other solution to ensure that they are still delivering the exceptional end user experience, mm -hmm. which is their goal mm -hmm. as an enterprise. Okay. 
So you're there to help all these people that do have to migrate this completely new change. And completely. that's happening now? That's happening now. Because, you know, for many of these SAP projects, it takes actually uh, two years, two to three years to do the complete uh, migration or wow. uh, deployment of, of large products because they have, uh, you know, all different kind of uh, methodologies. I mean, if they start uh, to take their current data, they need to worry about moving the data, moving the, the business processes, transforming those business processes. Uh, if they're trying to do complete what they call greenfield, mm -hmm. uh, in that case, they need to start from scratch. And that also takes kind of doing the whole thing all over again in new infrastructure. It takes 18 months to three years in okay. most of the large enterprises. Mm -hmm. So if they want to uh, completely go to migrate to SAP for HANA in uh, four years, then they need to really start doing it now. They need to start planning. doing the planning, mm. doing proof of concept so that they could actually do their 18 months uh, in, in the next couple of years. Wow. So uh, that's why SAP uh, testing, SAP uh, test automation is key for us in one of our target markets that we are focusing on in addition to 150 plus different technologies that we uh, we support and test, which makes it very important that we are of one of the few solutions that actually helps customers test end-to-end, -end, starting from uh, their mobile and web browser to the middleware to the back-end technologies like SAP, Workday, Salesforce, and what have you. Mm. Because large enterprises, they not only have the mobile or web, they have their complete uh, uh, application infrastructure that right. is powered by different technologies. And that's where uh, having support uh, for out-of-the-box support for 150-plus uh, technologies become very, very important to our customers. Let's talk about the marketing aspect uh, of this. You know who you want to mm -hmm. go after. Uh, how do you get them? I know that you're on the Magic Quadrant, which yeah. makes you one of the top uh, you know, shortlist yeah. vendors to look at. So that helps a lot with that recognition. Definitely. But still, you're in a competitive market. So how do you actually get these uh, particular targets to sit down and have a conversation? Right. Uh, multiple ways, traditional ways of kind of going uh, via email, going to events, uh, uh, doing the SEO uh, search engine optimization mm -hmm. to bring uh, them to our web page. Mm -hmm. uh, we definitely focus on many of those. We target the personas, we target the large enterprises and uh, uh, their VP of QA and the, the personas that we are targeting, VP QA. of uh, De uh, DevOps mm -hmm. uh, transformation. Lately, we are seeing some new titles coming up, uh, VP of transformation. Mm -hmm. As digital transformation is becoming mainstream, right. uh, there are uh, executives who are focusing on uh, transformation, whether it's SAP transformation uh, uh, that is powering the digital transformation or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, th we are targeting those. So uh, kind of definitely are following the traditional ways to uh, reach out uh, to our audience. But in addition, there are multiple tools that we use. For example, I'll give you an example of a tool called Engage You, mm -hmm. where we, we basically uh, watch the engagement of different uh, you know, users, different personas coming to uh, our web page, looking at different assets, how they're engaging, uh, and we track what they call engagement per day or uh, total engagements uh, that they do like different people coming from different companies we kind of uh, we it's it's a tool that helps uh, in account based marketing yes so for example uh, we uh, just uh, we have a customer called uh, Tyson for example Tyson Foods yes. and we started watching them that okay their engagement is going uh, more than uh, more than some of the other customers and then we had we started targeting them we sent out more messages to them we had retargeting our uh, digital assets to them and then uh, our sales guys also started making calls to them once we saw that their engagement is is uh, changing increasing that we we understood that okay they have interest uh, in, in the product they have a challenge that we could address so uh, we uh, focus uh, on uh, 
kind of uh, targeting some of those those companies who have uh, better engagement, and then uh, we follow that up with uh, uh, more information, uh, move them along, as I talked about in the funnel, from top of the funnel to the middle, middle of the funnel, and then we have different assets, right, different tools mm -hmm. that helps them, for example, uh, in the top of the funnel, the web copies, uh, the webinars, or uh, blogs help. Mm -hmm. When you're in the middle of, uh, of the funnel, uh, kind of case study helps. Uh, when you are towards kind of bottom of the funnel, uh, ROI uh, calculator, mm -hmm. uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, where you know, like they could say, okay, fine, we have decided we are uh, between three of these companies. Right, a short list. Uh, short yeah. listed. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, you know, let's look at ROI. Let's look up, look at uh, total economic impact. For example, we worked with Forrester to do uh, a paper which kind of turned into a tool called uh, TEI, mm -hmm. Total Economic Impact. Uh, uh, it's a white paper uh, based on the interviews with multiple customers, and uh, and uh, that clearly articulates what was their ROI. Mm -hmm. And then we used that, we took that model and created a tool that for any customer that they could go and assess and see that what will be their ROI. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Um, I hear about influencer marketing, and I'm, I'm wondering, are you, uh, uh, do you have an actual like, program and focus on influencer marketing? Yeah, I mean, influencers are key in, uh, in any of the industry. Mm -hmm. So we uh, do have an influencer program. Uh, we have one of our team members kind of focusing on, on that. Uh, we uh, target uh, some of these influencers who are in the testing world. They are uh, the top leaders uh, in the industry who have pretty good significant uh, social presence. Uh, we work with them. We engage with them on social media. When they publish something, we try to uh, comment. We try to uh, engage with them. And in turn, we get uh, uh, a better engagement with our product. One of the things that, that we did working with uh, some of these influencers was uh, we did a testing hero program. And mm -hmm. the idea was that to look at who are these different influencers who are uh, helping in testing? Either they are sharing their best practices or they have done some good work. So we basically created uh, more of a contest of testing heroes. And we had testing engineer, testing manager, uh, and there are like three or four different categories. And we had uh, almost like 80,000 votes that came in. Mm -hmm. And many of these influencers, either they participated or promoted someone else. And that actually became one of our, uh, it's not only kind of became a community program where people really wanted to become a testing hero who got uh, free tickets to go to Vienna and participate with nice. us in our annual event, but uh, uh, that also became a pretty good marketing tool for us. Uh, and we're uh, planning to continue this again for this year. And the idea is that we, uh, and we bring some of these testing heroes, invite them to our annual event, uh, and these influencers, uh, many of these influencers are either participating, and they take pride on. They actually had, we had one of our com uh, the customer employee, and their CEO actually on their LinkedIn posted, large company, I'm not talking about like 10 people, we're talking about like 15,000 employee company. Okay. Their CEO posted about this, hey, our employees are participating in this uh, uh, testing hero contest. Uh, please consider voting for them. Oh, Think nice. about that. So, nice. uh, so that's really, so influencer marketing definitely helps, especially uh, if you are uh, targeting, engaging, and working with influencers who are the top leaders in the marketplace, uh, who people listen to, who people like to read, who mm -hmm. people look, uh, look at as someone that they want to uh, you know, follow and, and understand uh, where they're coming from. And uh, because they kind of look at them to, to guide them uh, as kind of uh, they move uh, on in their either automation journey or transformation journey. And the whole influencer marketing is just one one touch point in the whole uh, you know account based marketing, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the account based marketing, I know ABM is a very big buzzword now. Mm -hmm. People talk about it's like integrated marketing, but right. with a lot more data driven right. technology to mm -hmm. empower you. Mm -hmm. um, so your experience has been. It's actually very effective, would you say? Yeah, very effective. And uh, the way we do it, like uh, for example, we only uh, we have done our 
uh, sales structuring, marketing program structuring based on, on accounts, right? So we uh, follow, we target, uh, you know, Global 2000, and then we have uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2, depending on where they are, mm -hmm. where our, uh, you know, we believe not necessarily on the revenue of the company or the size of the company, but what we believe we have some algorithms that we use to understand uh, or estimate, I should say, that this is our addressable market in this company, right? Mm -hmm. And then based on that, we have done tiering. And then uh, we actually focus on the Tier 1, Tier 2 uh, uh, enterprises and target them. And the targeting from Engageo, to different uh, digital means uh, by uh, retargeting. When they come to our, our, our web page, we know who they are, uh, and so on. And it helps. It definitely helps uh, uh, moving them uh, in the right direction. For example, I gave you example of Tyson Foods. That was, that was uh, we understood where they are uh, at certain, uh, you know, n when we had a new product, new release come out, I saw that they were really uh, watching. Uh, many people are attending webinars. We clearly understood that they are looking for a solution and that helped. Right, right. And it shows the sales cycle too. Right? Yeah, completely. Okay. Completely. Uh, if you target them, you know where they are in the sales cycle and then you could move them along by aiding not so uh, we uh, focus uh, from the marketing point of view we focus dig from digital uh, tools and digital means but we also get that with our ISRs or sales reps who go and, and connect with them and say hey can I answer any question I saw that you looked at this webinar or you did this ROI uh, white paper yeah. uh, and uh, then based on that uh, they ask them uh, okay how can we help is there anything any question that you have or uh, do you want to, to do a proof of concept where we can come in and show you in your example in your uh, application we can take one application for uh, for proof of concept and go through the whole process so we offer uh, those services as well and do you use uh, automation on the communication front. I know a lot of companies are using chatbot as initially engaging with on-site website visitors mm -hmm. and then routing that to the right expert to have a human come in and engage with the yeah. visitor. We, we do some, uh, but uh, not as much. Uh, so uh, I talked about uh, Tricentis being the uh, continuous testing platform, our core product the, uh, uh, in the last uh, year or so, uh, we merged or acquired uh, two other companies, uh, Flood for performance testing mm -hmm. and uh, uh, QS Symphony QTest that is more on uh, Jira ecosystem, kind of it, it's a plug-in to Jira and helps with the test automation over there. And those are more volume businesses, they're targeting, so there's uh, digital uh, tools and techniques are more important mm -hmm. and, and they're not as many direct sales reps. So those are those areas where we are using some of those tools, where we uh, kind of, we want to make sure that we are doing what we call progressive profiling mm -hmm. because it is important because we don't have as many direct sales reps right. to to go and follow up on. Right. On the other hand, for our core business, we don't because, uh, or not yet, because uh, uh, this that requires human touch that we are talking the about large touch. enterprises yeah. Yeah. where it is value-based selling. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, do a lot of profiling uh, upfront, you may lose the right kind of uh, you know users or potential buyers in that that area. So depending on the type of the business, uh, tools help. You okay. can't use the same tool uh, across the portfolio. That makes a um, lot of sense. And I know your company is growing fast. I uh, think you doubled the sales team last year. Mm -hmm. and you're looking to double again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, uh, we are looking to double again, and uh, that actually came with uh, its own uh, challenges okay. that one of my you know as a product marketer one of my role is to uh, to enable sales like sales enablement is key mm -hmm. so as we are getting more and more new sales sales uh, uh, professionals 
it's our job to make sure that they are enabled, they have all the tools uh, uh, at the right place that they can find as uh, they come in. It's very important for us to uh, not only kind of have the content at one place, but train them, mm -hmm. have a good uh, training program in place to enable sales. So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's actually one of our top priorities at this time. In addition to messaging and reaching out to the uh, to the target audience, uh, uh, we need to make sure that our sales guys understand our messaging. They could articulate it. They could uh, find the case studies, the white paper they need to support mm -hmm. uh, the story that they want to go and tell. Because we are uh, doing value-based selling. So we are not just kind of talking about that we have feature A, feature B, feature C, but we are about understanding the customer story, their challenges, and then attaching our uh, value to them. And that's where uh, you need uh, more tools and understanding of those tools and uh, enabling sales. And for that matter, actually, an extension of that is partners because we that's sell, through, sell, sell yes. through partners as well. Mm -hmm. And we use uh, similar content. We take the sales enablement content, uh, customize that a little bit for partners, and make it available through our partner portal. Uh, and it's, it's, it's key for us because in test automation, testing is, is primarily done by uh, system, global system integrators like Accenture and Vipros and Tata's of the world. And we need to make sure that they are enabled on our solution as well as uh, much as or uh, pretty much at the same level as ourselves are enabled. So how, uh, let me ask about the sales and the yeah. partner side. You mentioned that. Uh, Seems like the partners, you have very big partners, right? right? So do you have um, a second tier of yes, smaller we do. partners? We do. we do. And how do they work with your sales teams? In other words, are there any conflict or how do you minimize the conflict? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, there are conflicts at time because, you know, if, uh, let's take um, for large, cost, large um, system integrators, right? Mm -hmm. So they are doing a lot of different things. They have our competitor products as well. Yes. So it, it sometimes it gets into, uh, you know, like that, uh, uh, competition as well as you know like uh, uh, they are partner but at the competing for certain certain functionalities mm -hmm. for example uh, but uh, we have a very very robust partner program uh, we uh, work with them we enable them so that we are not doing conflicting messages when we are going to one enterprise we are going with one single message and they know where we fit in, what we do, what our value is. So that's why partner enablement becomes interesting. Uh, we do have a local, uh, so like tier two and tier three, as well as regional partners. For example, uh, we have uh, partners specific to SAP, mm -hmm. right? So because they have uh, built expertise in SAP and they are smaller uh, because they were part of these big companies and they started their own boutique uh, agencies yes. or, or uh, <laughs> consulting companies, but they are very useful. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they are uh, more motivated to come and work with you uh, than uh, many of these uh, these uh, larger, uh, larger ones. ones. Yeah. Uh, we have a very, very good uh, training program. We have a, a, what we call Tricentis Academy, mm -hmm. and we have around 70,000, I think, uh, certified uh, Tricentis uh, certified uh, testing professionals. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, that's pretty good, but at the same time, what happens is that some of the customers are telling us that, that academic certification versus having actual experience are two different things. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where, uh, you know, like working with uh, larger organizations, they have, you know, they, when they work with us, they talk about they have uh, 20 to 40,000 uh, trained, uh, you know, Tricentis uh, resources. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about doing some work in Houston, uh, kind of mo uh, uh, moving them over here does not become as feasible as somewhat right. local. So we do have, uh, local uh, test uh, system integrators in New Jersey, in, in Texas, in uh, the Bay Area, and so on, who help us uh, in, uh, in deploying our solution and helping customers uh, adopt it in a better way. What's exciting this year? I know we're at the beginning of 2019. Now, what are the initiatives that you're really 
excited about? So uh, we touched on this. SAP test automation is huge for us. Yes. You know, it's a big opportunity. Big opportunity, yeah. Y2K kind of situation. Yeah. There is an event coming up. Uh, and also uh, for our sales guys, you know, it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. The size ASP of those uh, deals are uh, higher than other deals, right? So that's one of our key focus. Another thing that we see here is uh, that HP, old Mercury, HP, now it's become part of MicroFocus. I see. Uh, they were the leaders in software test automation for that matter, application lifecycle management. and. As they're kind of moving to kind of multiple different companies and technology is getting older, uh, the, uh, there are enterprises looking for other options. And that's our focus area, uh, to focus on uh, target customers who have those technologies. For example, HP Quality Center, we are targeting them because that's the opportunity that the enterprises are looking for options because uh, you know, in this agile world, in the DevOps world, uh, you need a different solution that can help you test on a continuous basis or get you into continuous testing. Mode. So that's another uh, key area for so us. So SAP and HP. HP Q, uh, uh, QC replacement are the two key areas. And then the third one is still kind of focusing on our install base is, is key because uh, install bases uh, have, they, they know what the value we could bring, mm -hmm. and uh, there are more opportunities in different business units because uh, right. yeah, the referral internally. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, adoption could be faster and higher. So that's right. kind of the third key. So these are the three key areas that we are focusing on. Very and, exciting. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, you know, what uh, our uh, growth and uh, new sales folks, uh, many of them came last year. Hopefully, they are productive this year. Yeah, yeah. And many, many of them are joining in the early part of the year uh, to help uh, with, uh, with sales and uh, taking to next level in the second part of the year. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, Anand. Thanks for sharing about your industry, about your role, and it sounds like a, you got a huge opportunity, so it's very exciting. Yeah, and uh, we are in this world where it's not only a huge opportunity for us, but for enterprises in order to deliver exceptional end user experience, which is key for many of these enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, there's no other option you have to do software test automation in order to deliver uh, the software that gives uh, best end user experience. Right, it's a competitive edge actually. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing on the show. Appreciate yeah. you being here. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you for watching. Take it up with Jessica Lee.